Uh, roll call. Everybody's here except Joe Lewick. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Can we get one of the student ambassadors to lead us? Where's the flag? It's, it's over there. Thank you. All right, uh, public comment. We got what? Oh, sorry. Whose job was that? Yeah, if you could, thank you. Thank you. Good. We good? Right. Okay. <laughs> All right. How All right. Public you? comment. Uh, Ms. Lark is going to read a little blurb first. Per discussion at the March 2nd, 2023 Special Board of Ed meeting, number four, public comment will be limited to items on this meeting's agenda. Speakers must state the item about which they will speak. Please note the Lisbon Board of Education welcomes comments and suggestions from citizens of the Lisbon community. Citizens who wish to speak with the Board of Education about a particular subject or concern shall be recognized during the public comment portion of the meeting. Each citizen wishing to speak at that time shall be restricted to three minutes. As provided in Robert's Rules of Order, speakers shall be courteous, avoid personal attack, and refrain from the use of vulgarity. Public comment is an opportunity for citizens to bring concerns to the attention of the Board, but not an appropriate time to engage the Board in conversation. The board may choose to direct the superintendent to follow up on a matter as warranted. Thank you. One uh, one note. So I've been informed that uh, nobody used a sign up sheet that's on the podium last month. So um, I've been asked to remind people to sign up on a sheet when they do uh, speak. So any public comment? <clears throat> Thank you. All right. Hi, good evening. I'm Stacy Gurton, Lisbon Education Association President. Uh, just very quickly on behalf of our membership, I'm asking, uh, I'm speaking on item 10L, I guess it would be. Um, on behalf of our membership, I'm asking that the board postpone the vote regarding um, salary agreements until um, you can get some more info on how you might want to proceed. Thanks. Any additional public comment? All right. Thank you. So there's another opportunity at the end of the meeting for public comment. All right. Uh, correspondence to the Board of Education. I have none. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Go ahead. I don't know who. I could, I could see a hand, but that's it. Can you hear me? Trisha Maynard. I'm also following up to speaking on 10L. Um, I would like to let the board know that in regards to the contract tonight, um, I did not participate in the survey. Um, I felt that the survey had personal tax and false information that preceded the survey question. So I just wanted you to be aware of why I personally did not participate in that survey. Thank you. Any other public comment? No? All right, well, thanks. Uh, correspondence to the Board of Ed, I have none. Uh, report from the Lisbon Central School Ambassadors. Hello. Okay. Hello. Hello, my name is Trina Gassi. I'm happy to be a student ambassador for the seventh grade class. In ELA, we are now reading the adventure of the special band. In math, we are fin finishing up our lesson on proportions. In social studies, we are writing a research paper on a chosen animal and creating a shoebox diorama of the animal's habitat. I have chosen the green anaconda. In Spanish, we are learning about Spanish cultural food. In science, we are reviewing photosynthesis. Our basketball season is now over, and today was the first day of tryouts for baseball. Very good. Good job. Good job. Hi, my name is Peyton Contino, and I'm reporting about the eighth grade. So first of all, we would like to congratulate Miss Sutton on her new beautiful baby. 
Most recently, everybody has just finished conferences. Also, NJHS members have just finished helping with the book fair, and now we'll be helping with thrift breakfast. In math, we have been studying functions and in social studies. We just started in chapter four, chapter nine in our notebooks. Finally, in science, we just finished a lab on light and wave lengths. That's all for the eighth grade at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Hi, my name is Hi, my name is Natalie Vane, a sixth grade student ambassador. In ELA, we started a book called George, George's Comic Treasure Hunt. In science, we've been learning about bees and flowers. In social studies, we've been learning about Rome. And in, in, in class today, we learned about the Colosseum. In math, we've been working on facting algebraic expressions. The Brunch with the Bunny is coming up soon, Saturday the 23rd. I hope, I hope to see you all this weekend. The Brunch with the Bunny is after the egg hunt in the cafeteria. You, you can also get your pictures taken with the bunny. Also, the Brunch with the Bunny is by the PTO. Thank you so much, PTO. Thank you for listening. Have a great night. Thanks. Thank you. Jill said, I thought he was going to talk again. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. Um, administrators reports. Uh, Mr. Sheldon? Um. Did I miss something? Well, oh, jeez. Oh, I'd probably give that to you guys. No, it's sorry right. about that. It's my fault. All right, so uh, we got approval of minutes for the regular Board of Education meeting from February 26, 2024. Everybody had a chance to look them over. Find any errors? I didn't. All right, I need a motion to approve the uh, minutes from the regular Board of Education meeting Monday, February 26, 2024. The second. Okay. Lauren second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? None. All right, that motion passes. Now we have another uh, motion. We need to make a motion to approve the uh, minutes from the Special Board of Education meeting held March 4th, 2024. Lauren? There's a correction. Oh, I thought so. Not in this one. Oh, no. Okay, it was the first one. Got you. It was the first one. Okay, go ahead. Um, so we got a motion. Brandy second. All those in favor? One, one. Randy Martin, two. Opposed? All right. Good. I crossed it out. Got you. Fixed it. That's fine. No big deal. All right, now we can go to administrator's reports. Mr. Sheldon. Good evening, everybody. First, I'd like to congratulate our February Students of the Month. We have John Edmond, Francesca Krug, Liana Larson, Violet Boxold, Riley Bermudez, Mason Pina, Kayla McAvoy, Bryce Flight, and Anthony Undag. Nice job to these students for demonstrating the tenets of Cougar Pride and being respectful, responsible, safe, and trustworthy. Uh, last week, we had our, PT, our uh, parent-teacher conferences as well as our book fair. Uh, the parent-teacher conferences were very well attended, uh, and uh, also we had a great success at the book fair, and thank you to Ms. Bly for, once again, successful. As Natalie mentioned, we have lunch. Okay, a little technical <laughs> difficulty here. So, uh, brunch with the bunny this coming Saturday from 10.30 to 12.30 in the cafeteria. We do hope to see you there. And then also, I'd like to uh, acknowledge the variety show. We had a, a, another fantastic variety show. A lot of um, a lot of talent, uh, great student performers. Uh, thank you to Mrs. Gilgenbach for directing another successful show. And that's all I have to report. Thank you. All right, uh, special education. This is his last meeting, Mr. Trepanier. All right, good evening. Scott Trepanier reporting uh, as Director of Ed for Lisbon. And I am reporting on the numbers of special ed students across the district. Uh, in the month of March, the district has seen an increase of special ed students of five. Um, that number comes from uh, Lisbon Central School, having uh, six new students found eligible for special ed. And then we also had one student who was exited from special ed. In the high school level, we had a student at the NFA main campus 
as a resource student who has exited from special ed. So that's the end of my report for the numbers for special ed. Um, also like to just announce uh, this was uh, advertised, being, ad being advertised in the newspaper, also uh, through the LCS Weekly and on our website. We have our yearly pre-kindergarten registration, child find development screenings, and it's for children who are turning three on or before August 31st. It will take place on Thursday, April 4th, between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. And uh, these appointments will be scheduled uh, through the special education office. Thank you. And a report. Thank you. And good luck. Sorry, just to clarify, LCS had six new with one exit and high school had one exit. So that's four total, but you had five new or five total difference. I'll have to double check that. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? No. Probably supposed to be 117. Should be 117. Okay. This should be 117. Correct. All right, any other questions? No? All right, we'll move on. Uh, Ms. Keating? Uh, yes, just a quick report. I would like to thank publicly uh, Mrs. Diana Cormier's, Ms. Colleen McNally Reamers, and Ms. Kathy Emmons help with their assistance uh, in the business office while we have a vacancy in that department. They have really kept things running as smoothly as possible. As you know, Diana Colleen worked for us in the past and she retired. Um, I, they both retired. They did us an extraordinary favor to come back and work with us once again. Um, Kathy Emmons, too, just want to say is doing a phenomenal job as the administrative assistant. I also want to move on to the vacancy that we have for the position of business manager. We did have two viable candidates um, as of this morning due to very unfortunate circumstances. Um, we now have one there. One of them passed away. Oh, no. And um, it was heartbreaking to come into that uh, email and conversation. Um, that's all I'll say because it's a little tough. Um, However, this afternoon, um, another application did come in, so I'm going to look at that. If, for some reason, we don't um, land someone soon, I will look. I think it came from Dave Nowakowski, but I'm not sure. Um, looking at outsourcing, maybe I'll call a couple districts and just see what's going on there. But I did want to keep you um, updated because I believe I put something in the lunchbox. Yeah, and that kind of changed a little bit. So, anyway, that's it. Any questions, Ms. Key? All right, uh, we'll move on to, uh, let's see, Mr. McClue. Uh, yes, during the last uh, professional development day, we had AL Fire in here. They did the quarterly inspection for the sprinkler system. Uh, technician reported no issues or discrepancies and everything is running as it should. Uh, the other item I have is uh, a water update. So our water sampling requirements have changed. We are now only required to test the wells on a quarterly basis instead of a monthly. So that's a positive. And uh, I mean, we still have to do a monthly for the internal part of the building, but hopefully we'll uh, get that one to a quarterly as well. That's it. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. McGlue? All right, we'll move on. Uh, information, Ms. Keating. Yes, uh, just a brief report. Uh, we did hire a director of special ed early childhood coordinator. Her name is Janine Sullivan, and she will join us on March 27th. She has worked for me, just to be transparent, before in another district. Um, she has worked in many different places, including Norwich School System and NFA. And uh, I was so happy that she elected to come to us. Um, she has a wealth of knowledge. As a matter of fact, Scott Trepanier knows her very well and speaks very highly of her. Um, and it, I'm happy about NFA because it's one of our designated high schools, so she'll do a great job with transitioning kids, if that's where kids go. Um, she also knows the superintendent in Grizzle because at the time that she was in the other district, the superintendent was in that district, so they worked together. So there's gonna be a lot of nice transitional efforts, and we are very excited to have her. Science and Reading Initiative. Um, we, by we the team, every board meeting, 
were supposed to talk about something with that initiative. It was part of the grant that Megan Jenkins and I wrote. Um, so I decided to put it under my report. Um, just that administration and some teachers did do some science and reading professional development. And it was very interesting. It was about how the brain works with reading and how assessments, you can learn a lot through assessments, how a kid's brain works. Like open-ended questions, if that just happens to be one of the assessments, you can see, oh, if they answered that one wrong, it's interesting. Why did they answer it? What they did? What made them think outside of the box, perhaps, about that question? Um, it also, oh, no, and I have to give credit where it's due, which is actually you and your team of teachers. They're also starting to look at our current assessments, just trying to see the focus as to what it, those assessments are targeting with the brain. So I wanted to give um, credit to, that was not me, Mr. Sheldon and his team that's working on it. Oh, yeah, they did a nice job. Um, it's also Board of Ed Appreciation Month, March. It's by CABE, and you all know that, that have been with me for a while. So you have a little gift. It's from the whole Lisbon Central School to you. So we want to thank you for what you do. It's a lot of hard work, um, not easy. Um, yeah, it's, it's quite a job. So we just wanted to all to thank you, and that's what's in front of me. Thank you. You're welcome. Is that it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. That's it. Sorry. Any questions for Ms. Keating? Okay, let's move on to the consent agenda. Uh, approval of monthly expenditures. So, uh, were there any questions on the monthly expenditures? You want me to come over? I might have an answer. Um, give me one, one step. You don't mind? No? Oh, yeah, I'll tell you. Oh, the professional. Um, sure. I just had a question as to what other professional services were. Just to say the day. Diane Corbett. There you go. So I got to be up front with you. I had I, I couldn't come up with it without my budget book, and so I had Kathy. Thank you, Kathy, for <coughs> excuse me, texting Diane Cormier. And guess what it is? It's Teach Boost. So it's a, it's evaluation system. So that's what it is. Teach so, Boost. Yeah, it's called Teach Boost. Um, yeah, I do it for administrators. You, they do it for the teachers, the staff, and that's what it's about. So you're welcome. Does it change? Or is it always that? No, it's new. It used to be called something else, and now it's Teach Boost. So other professional services always Teach Boost? Uh, that, I don't know. I don't think so. I think other things can come under okay. it. But that's that's this a major player. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. Um, I had a question. I noticed there are um, four lines with adjustments in them this month, and like two of them match, and then the other two match. Is that where... You guys have said in the past that that's like the ability to move things from one line on line item to the other to cover. Yeah. Um, yep. So with, we usually. Oh, go ahead. No, you go first. Sorry. With that question, I was just wondering, is there a reason that we move from one that like we we made that account very negative? I don't know the answer to that, but I'll research it. I know Diana worked on this um, last week, so I'll get to her to find out what the answer to that is. Um, just so you know, Diana Cormier cannot attend night meetings, so I, I do the best I can. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? No? All right, I need a motion to approve the monthly expenditures for February 2024, fiscal year 23-24, in the amount of $1,024,596.59. Is there Lauren, Randy. All those in favor? Opposed? None. Motion passes. All right, now we need a motion to approve the financial statement for February 2024, fiscal year 2023-24, as presented by the administration. Lauren? Randy? All those in favor? Opposed? None. All okay, right. so that was good. Okay. All right, so now we're on to new business, old business. Uh, item A, non-renewal 
of employee contract to 23, uh, 2024, 25, 25 due to reduction in force and or loss of position to another teacher and possible action. Correct. Um, I think for new board members, they may not know about this, but even for some of the former ones, we've only done it once since I've been here about a non-renewal due to this issue. Um, what I follow is Shipman Goins process and we have to do it. I already met with Jamie, uh, the lady that's involved. She's been through it before, um, and I'll, not be, because reduction in force, not due to evaluation. This is not due to performance. So I have to be very clear about that. And that's why we have to bring it before the board. You make a motion, and then I send her another letter. And it's a shipment and Goodwin process, but other lawyers do it too. I just put shipment and Goodwin because that's who we have. If we don't do it, um, you probably want to know why we do it. If we don't do it, then the person really retains a right to that job. And I did meet with her, and like I said, she's very familiar with the process, and she said, yeah, this is what needs to be done. Okay, any questions? So we need a motion to non-renew Ms. Jamie Koziak's contract of employment for the coming year due to a reduction in force and or loss of position to another teacher. Motion? I'll make the motion. Okay. Need a second? Thank you. Jenny seconds. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. All right, item B, uh, PBIS, Mr. Sheldon. I guess we got to turn around. So well, it is up here. It's up here. Yep. Okay. Good evening, everybody. So a request was made to. Is this on still? Yeah, it is. A request was made to do a presentation on PBIS. So I did ask members of the PBIS team to. Uh, join me. So if they could join me up here, that'd be much appreciated. So we created a, a presentation um, for you all. <coughs> and it should go from here. I think it does. Ah, there it is. Oh, a little small. Sorry about that. So our PBIS has been around since uh, the 16, 17 school year. It was implemented. Uh, a team was created to come up with lesson plans um, to teach throughout the school. And they were, uh, the plans were for the areas of the school, the hallway, classrooms, cafeteria, assemblies, what we do, uh, what's the expected behavior during a safety drill, uh, and also riding the bus. And what happens is at the beginning of the year, the teachers teach these lessons. And, this, and throughout the year, the kids practice these lessons. And if we see that um, these the expected behaviors aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing, then we do more reteaching. Um, we also, the team created a referral form. And it's, uh, there's teacher, man teacher managed uh, behaviors, as well as administrative uh, managed behaviors. And then Throughout the process, there are also incentives that were created uh, for the, the school. Um, and we have school-wide incentives as well as student incentives. So that's how we go throughout the day with our, our PBIS system. Let's talk more about it. So we have our current members of our team listed there. Brian, Kate, Stacy, Michelle, Terry, Jocelyn, Michelle, myself, and Kathy. We also, uh, as part of our ambassador program, have three student ambassadors. We have Kelsey, Bryn, and Peyton who join us. And so what the, the PBIS team does is we meet monthly and we talk about uh, the school-wide discipline. We look at our Swiss data. Uh, we also look at uh, the data to determine what expected behavior areas do we need to target. So. Um, for example, if, if we saw that there was an increase in uh, referrals that dealt with hallway, then we target hallway referral, uh, hallway, hallway behavior, and um, we 
flood the students with more uh, of our, our, our paws, we call them, which are little tickets that we hand out to the students. We also meet to discuss what can we do to improve our climate at the school? What can we do to maintain a positive culture? We also look at the climate survey, and then we also create uh, goals uh, to help us uh, maintain that positive environment. So there's our, our PAW. And the positive behavior intervention or system or supports is um, PBIS, school-wide behavior system that creates a safer and more effective learning environment. And we focus on improving our school's ability to teach and support positive skills and behavior for all students. And we do this by helping students practice good behavior. We call it expected behavior. We build strong community in which all students can succeed and grow. So it is throughout the school, so all grade levels do participate in PBIS. Oops. And so how is PBIS uh, implemented? So we look at different tiers. So the green area are the, the, is the area that most of the kids are at. And this is the tier one, it's high quality behavior curriculum for all students. Now, if by chance we have some students who are having a little bit of trouble with the tier one, then we go to tier two. That's targeted behavior support uh, for some struggling students. And what this might be is it might be a, a check in and check out program where kids will check in with a preferred adult in the morning. Um, and then they wrap up the day with a conversation with their preferred adult to talk about how their day went. So the morning begins, you know, um, how are you doing? You know, let's do this, go through the day. Any concerns that we need to uh, watch out for for the day if the student's struggling in a, in a certain area? And then they wrap up the day with, with speaking to their preferred adult. And then our tier three would be some type of uh, behavior plan. So what, what plan do we need to put in place for our kiddos who are, who are struggling throughout the day? So PBS uses effective instructional strategies. So we believe that school-wide expectations and rules should be taught the same way we teach academics through teacher-led lesson plans. And this is what I was mentioning at the beginning of the school year and throughout the year, the teachers will teach um, about these expected behaviors. Now, if you walk around the school, you're gonna see some of these expected behaviors um, posted. Uh, one perfect place is the cafeteria, expected behaviors in the cafeteria. You also have expected behaviors that are um, in the hallway and the classroom that are, that are posted. So our expectations, what are they? Well, they're being respectful, responsible, safe, and trustworthy. So uh, you'll hear me when I do the, the Friday phone calls or looking in the, the Dear Parents and Friends, we acknowledge um, these students, the students of the month, these kids who really exemplify these tenants. These are the expected, um, these expectations that we want all our kids to be doing throughout the school day. Hence our PAW. So this is what our PAW really looks like with our be safe, be respectful, be responsible, and be trustworthy. And this all makes up our, our LCS Cougar Pride. So if you're thinking about some of the rules that we post, um, some of our rules in the cafeteria. So if you can't read back there, I'll read, I'll read some of them to you. Be courteous in line, use good table manners and polite words, place all trash and utensils in their proper place. And this is, goes on in the, in the cafeteria. Hallways, report any unsafe and appropriate behavior, use appropriate language, allow others personal space. And these are also um, behavior, uh, expectations that are uh, taught um, through different practices uh, throughout the year with the teachers. So we, I mentioned about rewards, school-wide rewards. So we have our Fun Friday, we have our cash pause for items. So we have a, a paw cart. Uh, sorry, my Rhode Island accent is coming out. The paw cart, where students, students can cash in their paws and um, receive a little trinket or something. We have shout outs of the intercom. We have fine dining, which um, has become really popular this year. Uh, Mr. Rossi, thank you very much. You put on a, a great uh, fine dining experience for our kiddos. 
another thing that's been really popular this year is the Bean Boozled with myself. Um, and if you're not familiar with Bean Boozled, so what Bean Boozled is, are these, uh, the Jelly Belly um, jelly beans, uh, but they have different flavors like booger flavored, vomit flavored, <laughs> liver and onions flavored, and they match the other flavors. So when you spin the spinner, you could get either chocolate pudding or you could get liver and onions. So, um, and unfortunately, I tend to get the uh, the gross ones. So the kids love that. But you're a trooper. I am a trooper. I am a trooper. So other other incentives. So we give out our pause for expected behavior. We do a pause for pause, and that's when we over the intercom we just say up say we're going to pause for a certain expected behavior at this time. If students uh, showed this behavior, please give out a paw. Um, we also do our student of the month and we do our end of trimester activity period. So if your kids come home and said, oh, we did this today at the end of the trimester, that is an example of our um, trimester activity period that we do every trimester. We use positive reinforcement strategies. We believe that students learn best when they are reinforced for demonstrating positive behavior. So for example, thank you for picking up that garbage that is being responsible. So to acknowledge what kids are doing uh, when they do what is expected of them. Consistent correction. We believe that students benefit from, con benefit from consistent and predictable environment. So please walk on the right side of the hallway that follows our rules for making everyone feel safe. Now I mentioned that we have referrals and this is what the team came up with um, when they developed this back in 2016. So they came up with a referral and we have uh, teacher, made, teacher managed um, behaviors and we have administrative managed behaviors. So uh, some staff managed behaviors are conferences with the student, timeout, detention, loss of privilege, and we have parent contact for all uh, infractions. So teachers, if you get, it, if you get uh, an email or a phone call from a parent, we want them because we want our parents to be informed of what's going on in the classroom. So if their child you know, did something, um, we want parents to know because if we had several of it and we said, oh, we've, no, we've, this has happened before, we don't want parents to say, oh, this is the first time I'm hearing about it. So if you receive these emails, that is why, because we believe in parent communication and, and letting parents know what's going on in school. We use logical consequence uh, to stop behavior, to preserve the child's dignity, to get the child to return to productive learning as soon as possible, and to guide the child with seeing how their misbehavior affects their own and their classmates' learning. So let's talk about how you can be more successful in the classroom. I think I missed one, just want to double check. Um, oh, I didn't, sorry about that. So office discipline referrals. So this is uh, covered by myself and Ms. Jenkins. So this is for defiance. So serious misbehavior such as defiance, insubordination, noncompliance, physical aggression, disruption, disrespect, abusive language, harassment, bullying, lying, and cheating. And these are handled by, uh, by the administrators. So we will give the consequence for that. So when implemented consistently and effectively, PBIS, it reduces the dis disruptive behaviors in school. It creates a highly positive climate throughout the school. It maintains a least restrictive environment for all students. It creates a consistent discipline and reinforcement language for all staff. And it addresses disproportionality issues. So we're consistent in everything that we do. School-wide school expectations are posted throughout the school. Specific rules are posted in high problem areas, such as the cafeteria. All classrooms have expectations and rules posted. Behavior lesson plans are overtly taught to all students. Discipline process is followed consistently by all staff for all students. And positive staff to student interactions outweigh the negative interactions. So what does this mean? It means that we reteach and practice expected behaviors in the hallway, classrooms, cafeteria, assemblies, during safety drills, and riding the bus throughout the year as needed. And that is all. Team members, any anything to add? I have a question. Oh, question, question. 
Oh, well, may I pass it? Okay. okay. So, um, and you might have said this already, so I apologize if you did. So the data shows classroom referrals are down or up? So classroom referrals are down. However, what about the suspension? Rate? However, our suspension rates are up. So analyzing that, where is where are the issues? Are they coming in, for example, because I'm involved with discipline quite a bit, which will change, I guess. Um, they're coming from social media, from the community, they're actually getting into it. the school, mm -hmm. from the police, from so they're coming in, right? And then administrators try to get to it before it infiltrates the classrooms. We do our best to do that. Correct. Now. So I just wanted the board to understand that that classroom referrals are down. So therefore, the teachers, I want to go on record, are doing a fantastic job in terms of the kids in the classrooms. So it's now become more of an administrative function in terms of suspension rate, unfortunately, being hot, higher than it's ever been, which, by the way, is happening in other school districts, not just Lisbon. So let me go on record with that because I talk with my colleagues a lot um, for collaboration purposes and for comparisons. So I think that's very important to put on the record, it's just so people understand why sometimes decisions are made the way they are, which we'll talk about later. Yep. That's would you agree? I, I, I 100% uh, agree. Mr. Trepanier, would you agree, being one of the ones that help with discipline? And I think Mr. Jenkins is over there. Mr. Jenkins, do you agree? Yeah. So that's something that we'll go over with hardcore data. Thank you. Any other questions? Do you... Uh... You provide this in the um, to the parents, the uh, structure PBIS. The um, in terms of the structure, so we I believe it's posted on our website. Um, we can post this presentation on our website as well, um, so we can yeah. do that too. Good. All right. Yeah, you do. I've seen it. I have a question. Um, so you said that the uh, climate surveys are done in a different smaller group mm -hmm. um, and in reading through the climate survey results that you had sent to us, I had um, observed that there was quite a bit of comments and responses to the questions that people didn't feel that there was consistent enforcement of rules and discipline across the board. So is that something the smaller group would um, deal with or would you come back to your bigger group as a whole and involve the kids in that? Yes to both. So that actually would be addressed in our, our large group. Um, the climate survey data is in our smaller group. And as I mentioned in a previous uh, meeting, we really picked out the fact that a lot of the kids felt that they weren't part of something. So our goal for this year and next year, um, until we review the data again, is to make it a more inclusive environment so all kids feel comfortable in school because a large percentage did not feel that way. Good answer. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Can you put the link to the this information on the website in your newsletter? Oh, you sure. Know? Absolutely. That way, not all parents will go to the website regularly. Mm -hmm. But it's a good idea. In your newsletter, that might bring them there. I will do that. Good idea. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Um, so we're on policy. It's Karen. There she is. All right. So we have an amendment to policy 5154 uh, Sierra uh, administrative regulations regarding health assessment screenings and oral health assessment and possible action. Yeah. So in um, in looking into the oral health assessment, we restored the original language um, directly from Shipman and Goodwin. Um, if you just look at page two, paragraph two, there was um, at the last meeting, they wanted more clarification as to when those <clears throat> health assessments needed to be returned to um, Ms. Fobb. So if you just want to look that over real quick. All right, so um, 
Are there any questions on the change? No? All right, so uh, we need to make a motion so we can wait first read and uh, vote on approving policy 5154 Sierra students. I'll make a motion. Who second, Lauren? Oh, Brandy? I think Brandy did. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Great, motion Aye. carries. Thank you, Karen. May I say something Sierra. that's a praise? Um, I like to give credit where it's due. I've been very lucky in my tenure here at Lisbon Central School. And I want you to know that uh, Missy Krause, Jill Marshall, and I want to add Karen Barber, they have been great in terms of steering the committee. It's a lot of work. And I just thought I should go on record that those three ladies, and if I left anyone out, I didn't mean to, but it, it means a lot to me. So I want to give credit. Me too. It's a great job, really. Just like Joni. <laughs> yep. All right, on item D, uh, grade level grade level study skills, Mr. Sheldon. Sure. At, at the last meeting, um, it was brought up, um, do we teach study skills? And if so, at what grade level do we teach the study skills? So it, it turns out that the study skills are primarily started, start at grade four. And so what you see in front of you that's included in your packet are the actual responses from um, the teachers. So it kind of varies from what they do throughout the grades. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. So <laughs> questions. I did have one question. Sure. What is the power of yet? Why <laughs> that you? was my question. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I can't do this yet. Oh. Oh. Yeah. It's okay. A pun. <laughs> oh. I get pun it. Pun on words. <laughs> So are there any questions on study skills? Grade four it starts on. Huh? All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, let's see. Clarification on curriculum committee and possible action. Well, um, Katie Bain did do the question, uh, framed it, I think, uh, better. And I sent it off to the attorneys, and I just haven't received a response yet. One reason being is one of the attorneys has been uh, has been on vacation, but she's back. So I don't unless you received something that I don't know about. Did you? Really? No. Oh, okay. No. So we're, as soon as I I get it, I can put it on the next. I'm sure it'll be ready for the next board meeting. Okay. I think. All right. Okay. Yeah. So we used to have a curriculum committee. What's the consensus on the board? Is there anybody interested in being on a curriculum committee? I, I want to hear the answer first. Okay. Well, the answer was kind of, it was kind of buried in, in the uh, shipment and Goodwin, well, the statute. In the first time? Yeah. Oh, right. But I'm it not just sure made reference to a com curriculum committee. It didn't say we had to have one. It just made reference to one. So the question was, do we bring curriculum to the full board like we usually do or, or uh, establish a committee? So we'll wait for her answer and go from there. I just... Figured I'd ask if you guys were interested in doing it. Okay. All right. Item F, healthy food certification. I assume. Mr. Yes. Rossi. Mr. Rossi's here. Uh, do you want me to be, what would you like? <laughs> well, <okay. laughs> well, so for the audience, we have to certify every year whether we meet or not meet the Connecticut nutrition standards and votes have to take place, which Michael outlined very nicely. Yep, two votes. And um, it has to be the exact, I know it's long, it has to be the exact language that is in your packet. Yeah. Anybody interested in reading that? It's, it's long. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I make a motion pursuant to Connecticut General Statute Section 10-215F that the Lisbon Board of Education certifies that all food items offered for sale to students in the schools under its jurisdiction and not exempted from the Connecticut Nutrition Standards published by the Connecticut State Department of Education will comply with the Connecticut Nutrition Standards during the period of July 1st, 2024 
through June 30th, 2025. The certification shall include all food offered for sale to students separately from reimbursable meals at all times and from all sources, including but not limited to school stores, vending machines, school cafeterias, culinary programs, and any fundraising activities on school premises sponsored by the school or non-school organizations and group. Thank you. Thank you. Can I get a second? Lauren, <laughs> second. All those in favor? Opposed? All right, the motion carries. You gonna read the second one, Brandy? You got it, all right. <laughs> Uh, all right, I motion that the Lisbon Board of Education will allow the sale to students of food items that do not meet the Connecticut nutrition standards and beverages listed, no, not listed in Section 10221Q of the Connecticut General Statutes, provided that the following conditions are met. One, the sale is in connection with an event occurring after the end of the regular school day or on the weekend. Two, the sale is at the location of the event and three the food and beverage items are not sold from a vending machine or a school store an event is an occurrence that involves more than just a regularly scheduled practice meeting or extracurricular activity for example soccer games school plays and interscholastic debates are events but soccer practices play rehearsals and debate team meetings are not the regular school day is the period from midnight before to 30 minutes after the end of the official school day. Location means where the event is being held and must be the same place as the food and beverage sit. Thank you. Thank you. Get a second. Lauren seconds. Okay. All those in favor? Opposed? All right. The healthy food is good for another year. Good, Mike. Thank you, Mike. And um, did you pass? Do a good oh, job sorry, reading, Brandy. Yes. All right. Uh, let's see. Now we are on to item G. G. Yep. ADA compliance bathroom project. Mr. McGlue. All right. So here we go again. I uh, reached out to Mr. Walt from the DAS department uh, regarding the bathroom project. I had a question. And when I asked my question, he kind of He's, he's kind of a rough guy. Either he likes you or he doesn't like you. And I think Sal will go along with that. Um, he is a good guy. But um, so I asked the question and he's like, well, why are, you, why are you doing that? Why isn't your architect doing that? So I explained to him, we don't have an architect. We're doing it. We're using a general contractor. And he's like, oh, no, no, no. If you don't have a, gen uh, excuse me, an architect or um, an engineer designing this thing, the state won't accept it. So it's a new development. It's a, it's a new development. <laughs> yes. So um, I reached out to Wayne Donaldson and uh, I'm sorry, I reached out to Wayne Donaldson. Uh, he gave me a name of an architect. Uh, funny thing is this architect designed this building back in 2003, this edition, it was Mr. Wow. Bob Roach. Um, remembered him, remembered me, had a nice little conversation, took him down to the bathroom and he put together this proposal for us as an architect. Which is nice of the guy. He did Very it fast, nice. he yes. expedited it. <clears throat> So, six thousand three hundred dollars, huh? But that is also a reimbursable. He yeah. checked the state. I checked that at fifty fifty seven percent. Fifty seven point four two. Yeah. Does he yeah. do it? Does he do uh, HVAC architecture? I was going to ask him that as well, but I wanted to at least get this one rolling. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. interesting. <clears throat> right. Very good. There's Thank no you. motion, right? Well. Well, do, we, I, do we need something just once again to say we're going for it? And I, I'm not sure because of the price, will we need to get another. I would say to be safe, let's just knock it off. Or get another. I mean, or knock it out, is whichever it, it is. <laughs> I'm not, I don't remember what policy was, 5000 or more. We yeah. had to get another price. Yeah. Well, so I, 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 just, I can get it. I could get another price. Um, but just to be safe, should we have the board do a motion saying go for it? I think and so. that way, Tom, because we don't want to be sent back. Yeah. Okay. Does anyone want to make a motion can, saying go can for it? Can I just ask a question? Yeah. So it's it's since this is something we'd be seeking reimbursement for. Is he like an approved vendor by DAS to get? Uh, I don't know if he's on the that? DAS. Yeah, I have to look into that. I can actually ask. It would make it easier. Okay. It would make it a lot easier. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So uh, I guess uh, I'll make a motion to okay. uh, right. proceed with the ADA compliance bathroom as outlined by. Uh, the architect. Is that good? I think so. I think so. Yep. Sounds good. Give me a second. 
Lauren seconds. Thank you. Before we vote, I just want to point out to the audience who are listening that um, this proposal is not to exceed $6,300. So we're not going in some sort of blanket. We might end up with more. The proposal includes that language. Any other questions? All those in favor? Opposed? All right. Yeah, you go ahead. Proceed. Right. HVAC, indoor air quality. So I reached out. I reached out to BT Lindsay, and they are working to put a crew together between structural engineers um, to make sure that we can support uh, air conditioning in where the location where it's going to go. Was which was one is the cafeteria, and two is we're also while we're going for it, we're going to try to do the gymnasium as well. Um, we're limited for space on top of the roof that would possibly hold the amount that we're going to need for the gymnasium. But um, like I said, they're putting together a crew with their engineer, crane guy, and just to make sure we can make this fun. So as soon as I hear something, I'll pass it on. All right, so we're planning on pursuing that this summer. Yes, yeah, we, we decided that. Yep. I, Okay, you still with the summer? Still with the summer. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yes. Yep. All right. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. So both these projects, we're going to have to do the same thing we did with HVAC before. We're going to have to go establish a building committee, go to the town, they swear us yeah. in as a building committee. The first selectman's office uh, gives us the uh, approval to go ahead with both these projects. Then they send it on to the board of finance. Board of finance gives us approval, and then we go to a town meeting. So pretty much be the same the process same too for the bathroom. Right. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yes. That's fair. Yes. Yeah. If if the town, if the voters uh, were opposed to air conditioning the cafeteria just a few months ago, why are we doing it again? Uh, we have to. The state's the pushing state's it. mandating. Okay, so it's well, part of that new yes, program. It's on that Correct. Journey. Yeah. 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 If, and if they don't journey. take advantage of it now, they're going to be paying full price for it later on. And the audience needs to hear that. And they need oh, to know. I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so what would the reimbursement it? rate be this time? Uh, as of right now, we're at 57.14%. Okay. And if we get these two things done, then the entire school will have air conditioning? That's correct. Yep. Good. Yep. All right. Any other questions? Do we need a motion for this one, too? Well, I thought we already did one. Didn't we do it already for the HVAC? If not, let, I just say to play it safe, let's get it done. Because otherwise, we're going to bounce back and forth between. So, All right, I'll make a motion to proceed with the okay. HVAC indoor air quality right. project. Need a second. Lauren seconds. Okay. All Thank in you. favor? Okay. Opposed? All right, motion carries. NFA proposed contract. Skiing. Yes, it's very quick. Uh, Joe Lurick had asked that one of the means just to keep you updated as to whether it's moving along. It, it did get stuck for a little bit, but that's okay. Um, now we are meeting on March 26th with Nate Quisnell. He's the head of NFA to review the bus contact proposal to see what NFA thinks about it. And I assume that's the board of trustees. Um, and we're just going to go back and forth for a while. So that did get solidified. So we are we are on the move. Where it ends up, I, I really don't know yet. That's it. Do we need a motion on so long? No, I don't think so. Oh. <laughs> okay, I fell into that one. All right. <laughs> Very good. Any other questions on the NFA contract? Oh, no. Okay. All right. Uh, 24, 25 budget. I guess that's me. Uh, so. Well, it's also, yeah, a little with yeah. us too. I'll, I'll pass. So last week we went to the uh, Board of Finance. Last Wednesday we went to the Board of Finance meeting and we presented the 24, 25 budget. We came in at uh, 1.93 increase over last year, uh, which really isn't too bad considering we absorbed an 8 percent increase in uh, 8 plus percent increase in the Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield. We had a big increase, 12.5 percent in transportation, special education went way up. Um, so there were a lot of uh, there were a lot of increases that were kind of offset by some savings in other areas, but. We still came in at 1.93, and, and the Board of Finance seemed pretty receptive to it, so we'll see where that goes next week when they vote on it. There's a, a, a note you guys had left before this came out 
And they they were talking about a possible three mil increase. I, oh, I yeah. can't hear you, Lauren. Lauren. Oh, I just said at the board of finance meeting for the town that uh, they did propose there could be a three mil increase to the budget. So. Yeah, two mil of that is a firehouse. Yeah. Yeah. Two plus, right? Yeah, a good chunk of it. Yeah. They're gonna see what they can do. Well, we still have uh, you know, seven hundred kids that attend yeah. Lisbon School District and sending towns we have to take care of them too right so we can't come in with a zero percent increase every year there there's cost increase in everything we do um, and, and, and i last, think that's pretty conservative 1.93 yeah. and the last i knew the board of selectmen's budget is increasing by 17 percent significantly yeah yeah yes sir uh with that said just to reiterate i don't have all the towns but from the London day over the last few weeks, Norwich 11.9, Preston 5.6, Waterford 5.7, Montville 4.4, New London 16, Broughton 9.1, Stonington was 5.6, excuse me, is 5.6. There were 5.1 on the superintendent's budget, but the Board of Education pushed to increase it to uh, fund additional support staff. East Line 5.5 and Grizzle 5.97. So just kind of want to make it clear to anybody and everybody that we're half of any of the towns that I could find information for on the day for the last month or so. So I just want to make sure that we're doing our due diligence and not trying to make up for other town areas of increase by not doing what we should be doing here. That's right. All. Very good. right. Well, I can say uh, that that never even was considered when we were putting our budget together this year. Uh, the superintendent came in with a pretty reasonable budget. We actually increased her budget um, mm -hmm. at the subcommittee level. So, um, so if I could respond to that, yeah, and also I would like to go over some data because there might be some misinformation. No one's fault, but that's um, kind of spinning out there. Mm -hmm. But, for example, last year we came in a little below 5%. So you say, wow, but where the money went, you can't just look at the percentage increase. Where the money went was to NFA, rightfully so, I'm not arguing that, and it went to healthcare costs and some special ed. So Lisbon Central School, it was an, it was all right budget, but not like this one, believe it or not. This one at one point, whatever, because I don't know where it's going to go with the Board of Finance, has more for Lisbon Central School than last year's budget. I talked to some of my colleagues. They, we call around saying, what percentage are you coming in at? What percentage are you coming in at? So I'm not going to say which districts. It wouldn't be right. But when I talked to some of my colleagues, I said, you're coming in at what? And they told me. I said, well, well, why are you laying off teachers? So it's not going towards <laughs> It's going towards our healthcare costs during double digits. Double digit healthcare costs. So budget is a very, to be preaching the choir for some of you, a very complex process. And you have to understand that, for example, I'm gonna go over this with data, that this budget for LCS actually has more in it for LCS than last year's budget, which came in higher. And that's the way it is. We came in at single digit healthcare costs. Um, before you get into your presentation, I do also just want to make note that um, Scott Trepanier did a wonderful job with this budget too, because the special education costs go up and we all know that transportation went up quite a bit. And Scott found us some alternative transportation options that were able to save us quite a bit of money in this budget. So thank you very much for that. Yep. Yeah, and, and Scott's getting yeah. that in the IEP. I'd also, yeah, I'd also like to credit uh, my secretary, Linda, yeah. and also uh, Diana Cormier, all of us together working on that. So. Yeah, let's all keep in mind that this is uh, the first budget season we've gone through without a business manager. So it's a lot it's of work. <laughs> that's a lot of work for some part-time people. But um, anyway, that's okay. But what I'd like to do, because there seems to be, and I don't think, I think it was well-intended, but some wrong, wrong is a bad word, inaccurate information about support staff. What it was this year and what it is next year. Um, there was a quick meeting. Monday night was when 
Do you remember we all solidified the budget and the next meeting was on a Friday morning to just oh sorry. Should I start over? Oh no, okay. I tend to be wild. Um so anyway, a quick meeting on Friday morning um, where we discussed highlights of the budget and a question did come up about support staff and what I said was uh, you will see a positive increase for next year with support staff. I will give you the details after the Board of Finance meeting because, again, I don't know where it's going. That's fair. Um, but you get a kind of a sense like how people are receiving it at that town meeting, that um, Board of Finance meeting. So, uh, Mr. Trepanier, my friend right here, and I worked on this data. We had already some of it done, but I think it's very important that we go over it so that there is no confusion, and that I will go over it with the staff, um, actually tomorrow, right? Okay, but I'm not sure this is in the right order, and I will take responsibility for that. I would go, if you agree, to the second page, 23, 24 compared to 24, 25. Or would you not like to do that? What would you like, Scott? No, I think that's good. Oh, you don't have a problem with it? I so agree. if you could go to the second page, and we broke it down in terms of hours, because interns work different hours, part-time assistants, the whole nine yards. So if we say we're replacing someone, an intern, with a part-time assistant by bodies, it doesn't show the picture. Do you see what I'm saying? Because interns have a longer debt. So you can't just go by bodies. You have to go by number of hours. So, and I don't know if I should be doing this. Should I be doing this or you? I didn't know how you wanted to do this. So, so anyway, let, let's let jump in. Yeah, so let's go. T, you want to do it? Sure. You can do it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'll jump in. So, so what, I, what, what we did is we went through all the schedules and we added up the minutes of uh, inclusion support in classrooms uh, that staff are providing across the building. And this is how we came up with uh, the hours for 23, 24. And then what um, we did is we projected out the hours of support that would be available based on our projections for 24 and 25. So if you look at, uh, for example, the teacher's inclusion hour uh, across the building, we're looking at 33 hours and 45 minutes a day of inclusion support across the building. With that assistance providing. It's okay. So are you looking? Go ahead. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. It, well, it's just 33.75. Yeah. That's all. But go yeah. ahead. It's well, for the audience, really. Yeah. All right. The decimal point becomes right. Yeah. So 33.75, and then the edu educational assistance uh, was 35.1 hours per day. And then you can see that the interns, temporary tutors, that combination that we had this year at this time going through the schedule, 41.35 hours. Uh, per day. So the average hours per day of inclusion support across the building was uh, 110 hours, oh, 0.2, 110.2 hours. So then we projected out for the next year based on current projections uh, going through with where we are with IEPs and, and uh, students' disabilities at this time, and also projecting out a couple things with what's transpiring with current students who are looking to have some changes in their IEPs in this annual cycle that's going on this month, we can kind of project out where we're going to be at for the start of next school year. We also know that things change. Students move in, students move out. IEP meeting, PPT meetings can result in changes in these services. But at this time, this was the best projection we could make. And we projected out that uh, it would result in 37.1 hours of teachers uh, with in inclusion support and then ed assistants 39.15, and then interns and temporary tutors, uh, which are being uh, funded by various grants, uh, such as IDA, Medicaid, REAP, also uh, school, school readiness, readiness, school readiness, pre-K tuition, um, that came out to 50 and a half hours. So there is a net gain based on adding this together, uh, we're projecting out for next year, at 16.6 uh, .6 hours per day. And what is the um, length of our school day? 6.75 hours. Okay, so just to give them uh, some kind of feeling. And before, well, we could take a question now, but there's some stuff that relates to this. So I don't know if we should wait or take them oh, now, but. I, I just have a question for definition. Mm -hmm. So 
inclusion support is saying that these are teachers and educational assistants and interns and temp tutors who are in addition to the regular classroom teacher? They're staff that are working in the, the regular classrooms. Mm -hmm. So I think we're going to go back and forth a little bit, Scott um, and, and Christopher. So if we look at the ratio, which is on the next page of this school year, we can't give it to you yet for next school year because we haven't done the class list. So therefore, we don't know where the kids are going to go. But in terms of ratio this year, with the help they got, and by the way, um, I really uh, praise the union for coming to us saying they need help, and we gave them help this year. Um, there's also a talk about class size, but as you know, class size is a negotiable thing. I couldn't change the class size parameters because that's a contract negotiation. So I explained all that, and it, I think it went over. What do you think, Mr. Sheldon? So, um, but I credit them for asking for more help, which we gave them this year. So the ratio, you can see, 9 to 1, 9 to 1, 13 to 1. For the audience, our class size is 25 by contract. And when it turns up to uh, 28, then a decision can be made about adding help. So, mm, yeah, 9 to 1, 9 to 1, 13 to 1, 14 to 1, 7 to 1, 16 to 1. And I'll tell you where the issue comes in, though, in fairness. 8 to 1, 11 to 1, 21 to 1. That's a teacher in a class that doesn't have any special ed students whatsoever. Uh, 11 to 1, which, I mean, could change. Don't get me wrong. It, it could change. 12 to 1, 8 to 1, and 18 to 1. 18 to 1 is at the fifth grade level. Um, where the rub comes, I believe, is superintendent, but I need my team to correct me if I'm wrong. The stat, it, it's been a hard year for health. It really has, sickness. Um, between COVID, the flu, uh, that pink, eye. pink eye, oh God. No, it's true. That, that oh my gosh, I even got it. Um, that virus, RS, virus. yep. So what happens? It, no, it was a tough year. I, I got part of it myself. So, yeah. um, yes, I did. Um, so some days there were like eight to ten teachers out. Now, what do you do? You got to take your support staff because you got to teach. You got to have the classes covered. So that would happen. We'd have to shift them. Now, I don't know how often it happened. Uh, I would say teachers would say, and I don't blame them. Maybe it happened too much because when you're relying on people, I don't know, would you say once or twice a week? I don't know, for a while there when everyone came down with stuff? Um, I don't when, know, am I over exaggerating? No, when, when we had the flu and pink eye at the same time, it was, it was potentially brutal. more. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's part of the problem. And we have so many staff members, there's no one else out there to get. We, we, I have superintendents calling me. Can you, can you free up some more your people? And I'm like, no, I can't free up our people. I'd do anything for you, buddy, but we have to teach here. Um, so it's a problem not just for Lisbon, it's a problem in the area. But actually, we have quite, quite a, a big number of staff. We were lucky getting them in. They wanted to come to LCS. We, we even, not to sound bragging, but we even had people leave other districts to come to us. If I, if I may, um, we actually accumulated two more subs because they're, they know the subs that we have in town and they talk about how great it is to work at LCS. So they wanted to be part of it. And they've been with us now for the last three weeks, uh, quite, uh, quite a number of days. But our staff, I just want to go on record, our teachers are excellent. So it would just, they are, they're excellent here. And I would go to the back for them anytime. Um, I think they work hard. I think the support staff that's also here, we work very hard together. And we, we get through quite well. Our scores are probably still going to maintain a pretty good level. Um, but I wanted to give you some information that I will be sharing with in more detail with staff tomorrow. Um, the first page, which we. Valerie, on that ratio, can you just clarify? I don't want people thinking, if you read this and you don't know, you might think someone that's 18 to 1. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, we'll go back. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Yeah, let me. Ooh. Okay, that's not that's not right. Okay, <laughs> I don't want us getting cut. Um, no, what that means is a classroom would have a, 
a regular ed teacher. They also have a, I'm sorry, you should do this, a special ed teacher and a sometimes help, but go ahead. Right. I shouldn't be doing this. So, let, let Scott Trepp in here do it. Let him have a day in the summer. So, so a classroom could have a, um, have the regular teacher, but then also have for part of the day, a special ed teacher. That special ed teacher could come out of the room and then a support person may come in in that person's place, such as an ed, ed assistant or an intern or a tutor. So that's what maintains the ratio. Like I said, where I think the rubber meets the road, and I think these two gentlemen would agree, is when there wasn't consistency during the tough absentee rates. And there wasn't. I'm, I'm going to tell you there wasn't. We had to pull people. Um, otherwise, we didn't have teachers teach in the classes, uh, classrooms. But anyway, so should we go to the first page? We didn't do it yet. Sure. Okay. So this, um, again, which I'm going to have Scott talk to you about, um, has to do with classroom support. And you'll see on the left side, special ed teacher who goes into these classrooms and the minutes that are supposed to be given. And then you're going to see the minutes that were given. Of that with explanation. Right. So looking at the special ed teacher column uh, for inclusion support, which say six, seven. Th I'm sorry. Oh, okay. okay, sorry. Okay. So looking at the special ed teacher column, looking at grades six, seven, and eight. You notice that um, that it's 90 minutes. So ELA class uh, being 90 minutes long, half of that class would have an inclusion teacher in it. And then in math class for 45 minutes, they would have an inclusion special ed teacher in the room. So that's 90 minutes. The standard for uh, an IEP for inclusion time, uh, the highest numbers that we see in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade would be a student would have 45 minutes of inclusion for math, 45 minutes inclusion for ELA. So you can see that right there in that number of 90 minutes that we're covering those students, right? Some students have less. So the students that have less, maybe they only have 45 minutes of math, but they're also end up in a class that still has a second teacher in it as a special ed teacher, even though that's not in their IEP. So um, you can see that uh, those six, so in seventh and eighth grade, the other thing to keep in mind too, is that, um, they, some of the students don't take Spanish, so they have an enrichment block. Uh, they have an academic support block, I mean. So they have academic support. So they're also getting some extra time, but that's not inclusion time. That's in a, in a separate class with students that have extra help. We also know that across all the grade levels, we have two resource rooms um, that also support the grades, which is, uh, which is not inclusion. Numbers. It's yeah, not inclusion time. It's students that are pulled out at those times but it does support the students, that's an addition. Also, we have SRBI, which is um, you know, typically a 35 minute block for grades, uh, for the lower grades. And then uh, there's SRBI time in the middle school levels. And then there's also enrichment <coughs> block times. So those are times that students are getting extra support, but that's not inclusion support, but it's extra support. Um, you'll notice that uh, through K through five, the hours kind of, 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 of of special ed teacher support time can vary a little bit. So you can see that uh, in fifth grade, you know, they're averaging 100, 100 minutes a day, where you can see in third grade, it averages 65. Um, typically, typical inclusion uh, model for the lower grades is, you know, 30 minutes of ELA, 30 minutes of math. Occasionally, you may have a student that has a 45 minutes. Sometimes, sometimes you have students that have less, you know, so, um, but that's pretty much hitting, hitting the max students right there, just with the special ed teachers. Looking at the special ed teachers, we're pretty much covering all those inclusion times for all of the IEPs. But then when you look at those other columns of staff that are in the classrooms going in and helping, you can see how many more minutes it can add to those grade levels to cover inclusion time in the classrooms. So does that mean that we never have perhaps um, a compliance issue, which I have to go over because there's a, other information circling that I got to correct. Um, but anyway, maybe, but then parents on an individualized basis would go to Scott and talk it out and see what it is and we fix it. So um, yeah. would you agree with that? You're yeah, so I would say that. like what happens at the beginning of the year when we're all putting these schedules into place, it's very complex with, this, with our building schedule and the teacher schedules and the students being placed into new new classrooms for that new grade year 
and with the support staff that, um, you know, a number of staff members would come to me uh, or Mr. even Mr. Sheldon and come to us and say, hey, we have through this someone that's not covered. We need coverage. And we had to do a lot of adjustments with support staff to yeah. get in compliance with the IEP to adjust things. Um, the major things were covered, but there were things, smaller things that still needed to be tweaked. And we worked on those the, at the start of the school year to, to, so, to get those covered. Now, when we go to PPTs throughout the year, if a coverage issue comes up because we changed something in the IEP, we have to go through and adjust the schedule. And it's a little bit related, but um, I get nervous as a superintendent, and so so my colleagues here, when there's information um, that kind of makes us look like we're not at all doing our jobs. And don't get me wrong, we, we, we can take criticism, constructive criticism, but I have an issue when no one can give me the data. And um, I'm known for that, for whether it's right, wrong, or different. But bring to me the data and the information. For example, there's something out there, and I want this for the audience in case they have a kid in this class, saying that we're not in legal compliance. I think it's at the fourth grade level. And I don't know what law they're looking at. Or what, so I need to talk to who, who, who's behind this. But we have in fourth grade, it's okay to do to divulge the number of kids. Yeah, as long as we don't give names. Mm -hmm. So in one class, there's 24 kids, and eight kids have IEPs. In the other fourth grade class, there's 22 kids, and six kids have IEPs. I don't know what's illegal about that. I, I can't figure this out. Where is the illegal compliance on this? But that's what I just bumped into. I'm bumping into quite a few things, which I have to research, and they don't have to hear it. But I will be researching it. Um, and and Miss Keating, I'd like to also point out at the fourth grade level, there's um, you know 105 minutes of inclusion support provided, and then there's also an, a real large amount of tutor time involved in those fourth grade class. So with only with that small number of special ed students, with some of them having smaller amounts of time of inclusion support below what the highest student has, that there are a number of students that are actually being overserviced. Yes, I, I don't like, yes, I, I kind of say give them extra time. But they're, getting extra, <laughs> they're, getting, uh, they're getting that extra support in their room. Yeah, Meaning they, that their IEP doesn't call for that much support time, but they're getting it because, because, they're, they're, because they're in yeah. the classroom where that support is. Right. I get it. So they're just benefiting from that extra support. Sure. So are you explaining that there would be, say, one body in that room that has six people who have that support written into their IEP? I think you should direct it to the director. There would be, yeah, I'm, I'm just asking oh, you both be, talking, I, I so. There would be a general ed teacher and a special ed teacher or a general ed teacher and a support person. So there'd be two people in the room. For the six students with the IEP? Correct. Okay, thank you. If that's what their IEP calls for is inclusion support. Now, don't forget that room, well, there's a room that has eight students in it. Some of those students, there's, there, they, you could have a student that has speech services only. So they don't have inclusion support. They don't they don't require it in their IEP. But they're considered special ed. But they're considered special ed. And they go out just for speech services and they come back in the classroom. They're considered special ed students. That's an excellent point. Can you explain a little bit, because I am pretty naive about what it means, what, what does inclusion support mean? So that what inclusion means is that the classroom consists of at least 50% regular ed students and the remain and and 50% special ed students at a minimum. So it has to have at least 50 or higher regular ed students in the classroom. So that percentage, the percentage, right? So we can see that if it's 22 to six, we're well above 50%, which is where we need to be. And, um, and because they're an inclusion student, that means they require, during their inclusion time that's listed in their IEP, they're required to have somebody in there to give that support. And that support's written in the IEP as a special ed teacher or a paraprofessional ed assistant, or so it's listed in there. Now, if if their IEP calls for a one-on-one, -on -one, yes. does that inclusion teacher that's teaching the other six kids, is that considered a one-on-one? -on -one? No, the one-on-one -on -one would be a separate person. Separate person, yeah, correct. Separate. And that's why some of these minutes these uh, hours that you see in this table look really high in some grades mm. because they probably have a one-on-one -on -one listed in there and it's, it's making up that time. That's why it looks really high at some of the grade levels. 
So why do we bring this up? Because the administrative team wanted to go on record that we're very excited about this budget. It gives a lot to the teachers, a lot, and they deserve it. A lot of support, um, intervention, um, mental health. So we were very excited about this budget because it really is going to LCS. Um, so I just wanted to correct some information. And by the way, if anyone has different information, all you got to do is bring it to me. So bring the data, and we'll have a nice conversation. I have no problem with that. I'll bring the team, and we'll talk about it. But I need the, I need to have backup as to why information is going out the way it is. Can I just ask, um, as we look over all this, do you have the enrollment numbers around about for the grades just in a total? For next year? Well, for whatever, like the, the eighth K through A yeah, we this do. year, if you have just a, an estimate of how many students are each grade. Oh, okay, we do I have it. it. Yep. I'm, I'm almost thinking it's in the budget book. It is well, it is in the budget book. Yeah. And I know she was on the finance right. committee, but it's hard when you don't have it in front of you. Yeah. I get right, it. Right. I get it. No, I, I just mean that you've yeah. already done the work. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's all done. Yeah. I just, you're yeah. absolutely right. Yeah, I mean, we can run it. Yeah, but it, yeah, we talked about it at the finance committee a couple times. Um, so that has been done. It's just that the paper's not here. And I get it. Yeah, no big deal. But I can get it to you. Since the presentation we gave last week. Which presentation? The budget presentation. I, I don't know. Um, I know we talked about it at the finance committee, the uh, small committee. But I can put that in the lunchbox. Yeah. It's very reasonable. Yeah. So. Well, I guess that's it, unless someone has a question. But I thought it was important. Oh, thank you. That's right. I did. I, I'm a little bit. <laughs> well, I do. <laughs> yeah, here you go. All right. So also keep in mind that we, we're also bringing on a uh, full time AP next year. And a school psychologist, I mean, not school psychologist, but a social worker, point three. And would you say she was servicing 30 kids? I'm sorry. Some, the social worker? I, I lost track. Social worker, 30 kids? Uh, in one day, um, she, our social eight. worker? Yeah. No, no, no. 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 She does, um, Scott, about eight. seven or eight kids in the day, right? Yeah. And she also does group meetings and lunch stuff, lunch stuff. Uh, yeah, that's the social work. She's only 0.3, though. So. Yeah, yeah, she's, but she's it's, not. It's here. increasing from 0.2 to 0.3. And it was previously paid for in a grant. Now it's in the budget. Yes, which is a, that is a great thing. A great thing. As a matter of fact, I've got, I think the guidance council was here. But they did wonderful backup. Um, Kathy Snyder, I believe, is here. But anyway, they did wonderful backup about the need. And actually, classroom teachers asked for an increase in the mental health services. And the assistant principal... Um, I believe it's in the audience. Um, will also help with proactive strategies for the classroom teachers. It's not just going to be reactive in terms of disciplinary issues. She's going to do proactive, uh, maybe do some professional development, get trained on trauma-based kids because we're having more. Well, I guess I'm preaching to the choir over here. We have kids with a lot of trauma. Uh, everyone does. It's society now. Um, and we have to we have to help them. We have to help them. And that's why we went the route we did. So this uh, subject came up under budget. But we should point out that a lot of these EAs and paras are paid for through grant. So that they aren't in the budget. Correct. So when Mr. Ro I was rich. Yeah. <laughs> Not you. <laughs> when Ms. Mr. Rich Rogers asked the question, um, are you replacing Mrs. Keating? Uh, he's a great guy. Worked with him in the past. Um, all the temporary uh, tutors in this budget, no, because a lot of them are grants. That's what people don't understand that don't do budgets. And you shouldn't have to understand some people because if you're a teacher, you're there to teach and you do a great job. And the last point I'll make is that uh, the teacher that was the teacher that was eliminated or re reduced in force from the first grade, she's going to be a full-time reading interventionist. And we're hoping with a little time some math, but you're yeah. correct. You're correct. So what we did is we extended that. Give, give credit to where it's due. Mr. Sheldon is the one that brought the concept 
of additional um, staffing, such as an assistant principal or a dean. It was him. And I appreciate that because I almost didn't do it. And then we got talking and I got talking with the board. And then we said, ah. So I went back to you and you said, let's do a full-time AP instead of the um, dean idea. And you want that, I, I want to go record for everybody, for consistency. Because if you have two people sharing it in the morning, you can have a problem that goes into the afternoon. Two different people, it gets all mixed up. So I thought he was right on the money. Talked it over with Scott, because you're involved too. You also said way to go, and that's the way we went. So I, I hope I cleared up any misunderstandings for the audience and for the board. I, I would like just clarification because I was under the impression that we were still reducing a 0.45 position. We are. That's who you just did the non-renewal letter for. Okay, so that well, position. Well, no, the position is not going away. Right, but that person, that we're, person we're losing a body at 0 0.45, 0 0.45 and we are combining two other pieces to put one who would have been 0.45 into a 1.0. Yes. Okay, I think you're right. Point, I'm still absorbing it. We're taking the 0.55 vacated by. Well, if we go with the, yes, the right. full time principal. Yep, full time um, AP. Which happens to be, should I mention names? It's someone who does also teach. Megan Jenkins right now is a point, uh, four AP, point six, uh, assistant principal. Her point six is going to be absorbed, yes, by the person who's also doing the point four five. I think that's what you said, right? I'm okay, sorry, it took me a while. Already that that. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Did that make sense to everybody? I see. I see one look. What we're basically doing is there would have been two part-time people, and we're making a full-time position. Correct. A body. Well, yeah. it, it's one. It's the one you just. A half a body. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Because we had a half and we had a half. Yeah. Yeah. Right? She was 0.45 and yeah. she's got. And yeah. Correct. Right. Um, so that allowed us with this new thing happening to increase support for the grades. So now we go all the way to grade four, maybe grade five, but I'm not sure. To grade four, helping out with small group instruction for math and reading. So again, it was support for the classroom teachers. <clears throat> Any other questions? All right, let's move on. Uh, item K, future bus contract. So, as everybody knows, we got we went out for RFP. We got uh, one yeah. one bidder back. That was uh, first student. It represented a pretty significant increase. Uh, uh, Twelve point five percent for the first year. Seven percent for the four following years. Um, we sat down as a Budget subcommittee and and uh, finance subcommittee, and we said, you know, let's try and counter. So we offered them ten percent for the first year and five percent for the following years. Uh, they rejected it, and uh, yeah, they, they rejected our counter. We also asked yeah. them for the language that they had in their previous contracts. I think we had three contracts with first student before we went to M and J, where they would provide uh, free field trips. Field trips yeah. uh, in exchange for letting them park down here in the meadows, they rejected that too. They did. So they know that they're on the only bidder. They do. Um, so in the interim, <laughs> in the interim, M and J came back to us and said, "Hey, you know, we think we can save you some money. Um, why don't you come talk to us?" Well, after many many discussions, we have decided that we're not going to talk to M and J anymore. Uh, there was a lot of problems with both operationally and financially with M and J, uh, and they didn't leave a very good uh, impression. Let's leave it at that. So we're going to go with first student. Uh, there are a lot of advantages to going to first student. Uh, ride sharing is a huge one with transportation hopefully. costs. Hopefully. Yeah. So hopefully we can work some of that stuff out. Uh, we had a long-standing relationship with first student for many many years, and uh, the only reason we Went out for RFP. Uh, we were kind of pushed to do it, and and uh, we did it. And M and J was the lowest bidder, and we took them, and we regret it. So um, that's where we're at with the bus contract. So Any can, questions? Can I ask a technical yeah, one? Because yeah, yeah. I don't know the answer. Maybe yeah. I should, but I don't. Um, do Plus we have yellow? <laughs> okay. 
Um, do we need, um, and they don't have it in front of them, are we going to have a special meeting or at the next meeting bring the contract so they can vote on it? Yeah, we're probably going to have to meet as a budget subcommittee, finance subcommittee meeting. Oh, and just, okay. We'll vote on it. Well, or yeah. just. Well, we'll, we'll approve it at the subcommittee and then we'll bring it to the board for a vote. Okay, because I know, I know. All right, okay, because there's a timeline on it, this. Um, does that give us enough time to? Uh, well, why don't, why don't we, we have do a, a special, special meeting? I was special. thinking that too. I mean, I know, I know, I know. It's another meeting, but what if we did a special and we brought? Well, you know, so we've already seen the contract, right, at the subcommittee level. Oh yeah, subcommittee. We it. Yes, yes. So we could make a motion to proceed with first student right now. Well, it's but not the whole it's board not hasn't my, seen it's not the my contract. Opinion. You want to see it? No, I'm saying the whole board hasn't. Oh. All right. Well, I can send you the. I'll send you the contract, and we'll have a special about that next week sometime. Sure. Yeah. Does that it, work? That, well, is that it's okay? pretty long and wordy. Shipman and Goobin wrote it. <laughs> okay. uh, no. Well, they they, they accepted oh. a couple of the changes, minor well, ones. Well, minor. Be, uh, yeah. Put some it of those grammar. They yep. knew. They knew that they were the only bidder. So they weren't going to give us anything. All right, so we'll do that. Okay, we will, so uh, next, next week. I'll, I'll have um, Kath call in. Can you oh. have them, somebody send everybody the contract? Yeah, yeah, we can, we'll, we can do that. Leisure. We can do it tomorrow. All right, let me make a note. Yep. Any other questions on the bus contract? All right, uh, let's see. We're on item I. Uh, wow, already. Amazing. Uh, I think it's uh, All right, so yeah, uh, we got to talk about salary agreements, <laughs> contract stuff, and that's done in executive session. Um, so we are going to uh, move to go into executive session and invite in uh, Teresa yeah. Schwab, Christopher Sheldon, uh, Brian McGlue, Sally Keating, and who else? Who wants to get well, that was it, right? Megan. Oh, Megan Jenkins. Yeah, but, um, are we going to, I'm just wondering about finishing. Oh, yeah. There's a motion to move. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, we can do it. All right, so we're going to move, uh, we need a motion to move agenda item 10, uh, salary agreements to immediately okay. following public comment. In a second. Okay, I'll just All right. say that. Yep. All right, Wait, I'm second. I'm sorry. Oh, thank you, Kate. Yeah. All right. Committee reports. We got any? I think we kind of went over them, right? Um, I'll I just just want to put it out there for with the policy committee met, and we have started discussion on the dress code policy. Oh yeah. So that is underway, and okay. we invite everybody to come and listen in if they'd like to hear what's going on. Yeah, I read all the uh, other good. district ones. Interesting. Yeah, it was. All right, additions to the agenda, this agenda. Does anybody want to add anything to this agenda? Yes. Uh, Board of Finance, I saw that uh, we're going for an additional appropriation. Are we on the, you know? No. No? Yeah. Okay. It could happen, though. Okay. I, I, I don't no, know. Judy, I think I saw what you did, too. It's the um, the excess cost that you guys. Yes, that's correct. So, so we had three students this year that were not calculated in our net excess cost that we submitted last year's budget, in last year's budget, they were significantly expensive students. So we went back to the Board of Finance and said, you know, here's the numbers on these three students. We're anticipating getting additional excess cost money back from the state. We would like that money back so that we can, you know, put it in our budget because we expended other funds on these students, right? So then they'll make the decision. The, so they have the paperwork. They're going to make the decision. Some more down. Yeah. We did. Okay. Down today. And then we were wondering, um, should Scott and I? Yeah, go ahead. Go, I mean, should we go to the meeting? Or yeah, we'll go. Oh, okay. It's just a little bit. And then also to point out with excess costs, we still don't know the base and the percentage right. at right. this time. It still has not been released. Right. So we estimated, I think, 73% in the budget. That's right. That's what the state reimburses us. Yep. 
That was the estimate. Yeah. Okay. Any uh, any additions to? Or, you got a question? Yeah, I saw someone post a request on Facebook where someone asked about next year's school calendar for the middle of the year. Did you approve it already? Or did you pop it up on the website? Oh yes, yeah, so it was up there. Yeah, okay. It is, it is oh, it is up there. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Did you want them? That's what I'm asking. Are there any additions to this agenda? I can't hear you. Would anyone still like to discuss the climate survey? I guess that's a no. Do you want to discuss it? You got to take a vote to turn it on. Not right now. You're tired. All right. Okay. So, do you want to put it on next month? Well, no? how about okay? Next, I was just gonna yeah, say. we'll get to that next. Oh, that, okay, I'm see sorry. Next agenda plan. Yeah, sorry. All right. Uh, so there's no additions to this agenda. Next agenda planning. We want to put climate survey on there. Uh, bus contract, right? Exit interview. For next month. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So that'd be a board survey slant exit interview. Board survey. Slant. We would like to add a board survey exit interview discussion to the next agenda. Yes. I, I don't know I who thought I it was the climate survey is what you asked about. <laughs> I did, and then this was an additional. Okay, so it's item. gonna be two agenda items. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, what else do we need? Um, well, more salary agreements. I mean, we gotta keep going on that. More There's policy, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, this one distress code. You know, I think I missed something. What was that? The policy? Didn't you say something else? Oh, right now I've got. Okay. Uh, sir. I should. I should. Uh, yeah, probably what we'll do is go under executive session, or if I get the contract, like to talk with you about, we'll, we'll do it under executive because it's still negotiation. Yeah, we can do that. I think. Yeah, we can do it. I missed something. Can we just go one more time? So um, I get policy, NFA contract, survey, climate, and ex board of ed exit. Exit interviews. Yeah. Salary. Okay, got it. Got it. Thank you. I knew I missed something. Okay. I'm sorry. Did you get all that, Mrs. Edmund? Good job. See, that's why you have an assistant full time. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, are there any other additions to next month's agenda? If anybody comes up with anything, just email me and we can get it uh, added to the agenda. All right. Okay. Public comment. Do we have any public comment? Go ahead. Uh, please uh, state your name and make sure you sign the paper, please. Uh, Philip Kinslow, 63 Kinslow Hill Road, and I do sign this every time I'm up here. Oh. Is that mic on? I don't know. Sir, Mr. Kinslow, is your mic on? Okay. Got it. Uh, Philip Kinslow, 63 Kinslow Hill Road, and I'm just letting you know, I do sign this every time I come up here and make public comment. Oh, good. That's good. A um, couple questions is, I know there's been a lot of turnover in the school. So question is, is like what, like I should say, like teachers and stuff. Actually, I think there's what nine faculty members in the last 12 months. I'm sorry, I, I can't hear you, sir. I know it's something about turnover. We heard that. Nine faculty members. That's from my understanding. That's that's left the the school district from Lisbon in the last 12 months. So my question is, is there is there any kind of report that the public can read to understand why? Uh, we've had that many people leave. Um, second question is, is with hiring a full-time AP, how does the teachers and the teachers union feel about this? Is there, is there like a, any kind of like written documentation like from the uh, teachers union expressing their uh, um, um, support for it or are they uh, not in support of it? So that's the question that I have. I'd, I'd love to see uh, something from the teachers union on either supporting or or not supporting uh, the AP. 
Thank you. All right, any other public comment? Okay. Uh, I'm Mary Nolan, six seven day trade map teacher. Yeah, I'm signing it. Okay, I'm sorry, but oh, I got I got to track this one, right? One. Yeah. Okay. It's down. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say that as an LEA union member, I do not support the request that our union president made tonight on behalf of the entire union. Um, I was not aware that it was ever discussed and there was no official vote as to how to proceed forward. Just wanted you to know that. Thank you. Any other public comment? Uh, yes, Adam Chittick, uh, 119 Strawberry Street. Um, I, I was kind of heard rumblings that there was a vote uh, of some sorts. Um, I'm kind of curious on where the numbers stand to date. Um, I, I don't know what was official or not official, but I'm just curious on the body that was polled, where, what direction that poll was leaning in. Does anybody have an answer to that? Okay, I was just curious. I know uh, this lady said she wasn't in support of it. Um, I was just curious what the majority felt. My name is Megan Jenkins, um, part-time AP and part-time teacher. Um, I've been subject to a lot of the conversation lately. But what I want to say is that there's been a lot of misinformation. I mean, I'm going to try not to cry, but there's been a lot of misinformation in this town. And part of that is giving surveys to teachers, my colleagues, with misinformation, thinking that I'm going to make so much money becoming a full-time AP that we could have bought um, support staff, which is not true. And I think that needs to be shared with everyone because no way am I making enough extra money to support these children to replace support staff. That is not the case. I doubt any of you would want to do, you know, be in my position right now. It is unfair, and I hope you all realize the dedication I've had to this district. 24 years, principal, intern, everything. And my husband's going to kill me for crying. Mm -hmm. It's been a rough week. For those that don't know, I've also been out on leave. This is a hostile work environment, not because of us, because of things that are being spewed in the community that are not true. And I have to stand up for myself. That is not good. Thank you, Megan. Stacy Gurton, LEA Union, LEA Union President. And I will publicly apologize to you, Megan. I think we're both passionately passionate people and we both um, want what's best for this school. And I did act out of, I did act emotionally at one, at one point. Anything that I said, I want to turn back around and not have it reflect on you because it shouldn't, but rather the results of this survey that were given, um, not once did um, your salary come up um, in the survey. I haven't even been part of any discussions regarding it. Um, so I would like that not to reflect on behalf of the union at large. Um, a qu questions were asked about uh, to the entire membership. Um, the question was, do you support the addi addition of a full-time assistant principal? Not Megan Jenkins, but the position. And the answer was 72% uh, do not. Um, I can, there's other information that this um, had and it's just, I don't know why they don't support it. Um, perhaps more information can be given tomorrow at the faculty meeting, which is what we're hoping for. Um, but that's, that's where we're at. So again, I apologize if there was misinformation put out there. I don't know where it came from either because it didn't come from uh, union leadership. Uh, thank you. Thank you.
Mr. Maynard, never at any point in time did we think that this information was going anywhere except amongst ourselves. Never did we vote, never did we have a meeting. I just want that to be stated. Michael Costanza, 13 Bayberry Lane. I really know nothing about the, the situation involving the AP. I don't know any of the people involved personally or any of the circumstances about the survey, but this sounds like a good time to make a point that I hope the Board of Ed will keep in mind. Uh, first of all, union membership is not mandatory for public employees anywhere. And yet their public employees are still covered entirely by all the protections of their contract whether they pay dues to a union or not. So I, I know this as a teacher in another school district that sometimes the Board of Ed, uh, either because they're not, they don't understand the law or they care not to follow it, does things through the union and asks the union to speak for the employees that are covered under the bargaining agreement. You do not need to go through the union. And I think in many cases you shouldn't go through the union information should be given to each and every employee directly from the board or through the board and, and by, by the administrators because the unions don't always share everything with the other members in the bargaining unit who are not dues paying members. So for those of you who are disillusioned with your union, you have a right to leave it and you're still covered entirely by your contract. Uh, also, I would say when it comes to hiring decisions like with a new administrator or shuffling positions around. Sometimes the other administrators in charge of those might have an agenda. They might have, you know, they have preferences that the rank and file of the teachers don't share. And the union has its preferences that not every teacher shares. So just give, if you're looking for survey results, go directly to the employees directly to the teachers, not through the union, just directly to each and every teacher. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? This stands up. Okay. Thank you. Michael. Andrea Kelly, just to clarify, I am a teacher at Valentine Elementary School. I was the union president, president for 22 years. And I am almost 100% sure that what happens at a union meeting, what is shared at a union meeting, is not to be shared in the public. So, Mr. Chittick, when you were asking that question, unfortunately, that information um, is Excuse public, me, Andrea. Yeah. Um, what now? Are Just you, give your address, but you oh, got the site 12 Blueberry Lane. Lane. Oh, yeah, yeah. 12 apologize. Blueberry Lane. Yes. Can you do the address? 12 Blueberry Lane. Oh, so, thank you. And could you start again? Yes. Okay. Uh, so just to clarify, so when people want to know what, why that information is shared, and I'm not 100% sure why CC shared it, what happens at a union meeting? But you just said 72% in a public meeting. So that's not legal. That's an Ill so that is not legal as the union president to share union information. As this gentleman is 100% clear as to our right as union members. And as a union member, if I fill out a survey, if that survey is not from CEA, if it is a if CEA puts out surveys, that information is anonymous. So teachers will fill that out. It goes to CEA. They take care of that information. A survey that is an in-house survey, I don't know if your survey was CEA or not, but if it was CEA generated, then they would have that information, not you. So I would never put out a survey and then share that survey at a public meeting because that is not legal. Teachers have the right to share their information, to share their thoughts, their feelings, they're validated, but that information stays in house. So regardless of how the teacher union feels, I mean, I've been the union president, I've listened to it for many, many years. We don't determine what your board of education does. You are the determiners. We don't determine whether we get to have an AP or not have an AP. That's not our business. That's your business because it's a position that you're creating and you are fulfilling. And if you think that you have the need for it and choose to fulfill that position, 
whether we like it or not, we respect it. So I don't know, I'm just listening tonight and she is a union member, correct? So her union cannot share information, number one, about her and should not be sharing public information or in that information in public. So that is a violation of her rights as a union member. So I appreciate the fact that you apologized to her, but also we've done her a disservice because that information should not have been shared. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Philip Kinslow, 63 Kinsman Hill Road again. Um, so the question is, now that we do know that 72% do not support it, um, will the school board take that into account of, are they still gonna pursue going with an AP? Um, second thing is, is if you do support going forward with it um, and don't take the 72% uh, the of the teachers uh, that don't support it, to me, that's a slap in the face to almost three quarters of your school teachers, just to keep that in mind. Uh, Adam Chick, 119 Strawberry Street, and I apologize. I, I, I wasn't talking about the numbers for uh, this is Jen, uh, Megan over here. Um, I was actually looking for the, uh, I thought, I'm, I'm not 100% on what was the survey, but I thought that something had to do with Sally's third year contract. That's what I was kind of curious about. Um, not not for in here, but maybe that can't be discussed. I apologize. I'm not part of the union. So my apologies if that's not part of the deal. Any other public comment? Okay. Thank you. Uh, we're going to go into executive session at this time. Uh, so the public's going to leave, and we're going to invite in Mr. Sheldon, Mr. McGlue, uh, Ms. Swab, and Ms. Keating, and Ms. Jenkins. <laughs> I already invited you in. Yeah, good.